So Orlando Regional just finished and Liam Halliburton managed to take it down with a very similar Charizard EX list to the one that Tord managed to win EYC with. The only changes I guess he made was he switched the Jirachi for a second Charmeleon and I guess he dodged all the Lost Zone Sableye decks anyway so he didn't really miss it. Now that was one of the changes that I had made to Tord's list so I already have a couple games. With that list, the only other change I did was I switched the second Turo for a second Nest Ball. I figure that's pretty good for like a local scene if you're not expecting like a ton of Snorlax or Control or anything, you can easily take out one of the Turos. And our opponent gets, I don't know, a fine start. We, I chose to go second here. The hand's not the best, but we can get Luminion for Arvin. Just looking through, seeing what I got. And now I don't have the Jirachi, so that's a little nerve-wracking here. And I've been playing a bit more with Charizard lately. I don't know. I I don't like playing the deck. I'm not the biggest fan of the deck, but it is a very good deck. Yeah, so we can get Buddy Poff in here. We can basically just fill our bench with everything that we want. The only... Thing I'm debating is uh, if I want to get Rotom or draw with Cleffa. And I end up going with Cleffa because I expect them to Cramor at my Cleffa this next turn. And I didn't want to put like a second V Pokemon on the bench. So I just Luminion for Buddy Poffin to thin a little bit further. Get down the Pidgey. I'm just going to retreat and Cleffa. Now I think this is a pretty good matchup for Zard, but it can definitely spiral pretty quick. They have a Chorus, they get rid of their Vacuum and a Switch. Now I'm really expecting them to, uh, to cram this turn, but if I remember I don't think they end up cramming. Just switching to Sableye, they really want to keep their comfies. Now I'm able to get out Pidgeot and a Charizard, which is nice. Just had to make sure I had my fire energies there because I did draw three of them. Yeah, definitely want to keep the collapsed. This is a turn that took me a second because I'm like thinking, what should I collapse away? Because I want to retreat and start attacking. And I'm trying to decide if having a 30 HP Pokemon for them to Sableye on my bench is worse than having a two prize Pokemon that can get knocked out by Iron Hands for three prizes. I do eventually decide to get rid of the Luminion with the Stadium. This is what's taking me so long here. I'm actually talking with one of my friends about it, trying to decide what the best play is and they're down a Super Rod. I'm knocking out their Sableye. They only have five in the Lost Zone, so I figure that I might have time to Turo up the the Cleffa. So, just gonna collapse away the Luminion here at any time. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the, the regional finals. It's really cool that Ancient Box made it into the finals. I think, I don't know. I know I personally... I thought the deck was fine after playing some games with it, but I didn't expect it to be like a regional top eighting, possibly regional winning deck after the games that I played with it. And they set down a beach court. They're just gonna chorus. This also, I think this is Goon Squad TCG. I think he makes YouTube videos, so. I believe this is him. This was, this person was Master Ball. Like Mew on the Mew Master Ball level on the ladder, so I'm guessing that they play quite a bit, and they do get the the Iron Hands, and the, this scares me when I see the the Roaring Moon. That's like not what you want to see right on your Zard. They're able to counter catcher up our Pidgeot, so they would have been able to take three prizes on the Luminion if I hadn't gotten rid of it. So. 
it's nice to see the correct decision being made. And I'm able to hear a countercatcher up the moon because they can just attach and knock out my Zard, and I really need the Zard to stay alive. Uh, hopefully for another turn. And I'm kind of hoping that they do find a way to like take at least one prize this turn because I want to Roxanne and like continue setting up my board if possible. They super out the uh, the Roaring Mooney X back in. They Prime Catcher up my. I think the Prime Catcher was their only switch card in hand, so they just used it to bring up my my Manaphy. Which is kind of weird. I thought that they were just going to iron, like, hands it and prepare for a Greninja play or something, but they just end up Sableyeing. The Clef is just a huge liability without the Jirachi. You normally don't want to put it in play in this matchup, but I don't know. That was more than likely a pretty big mistake. Yeah, and they take two prizes and put 30 on... My mana fee is that if I bench another Charmander, they're able to take another two prizes with uh, with their Sableye again. And I just Roxanne into the nuts. I'm able to Prime Catcher up their Iron Hands. And it basically, that just basically says, if you don't have a Moon this turn, I win. There's nothing you can do about it. And I, I wouldn't know that I would hit the Turo but I probably should have gotten the Radiant Charizard on the bench and tried to do that with Radiant Zard. Might have been a better play. But I was kind of worried that if they hit their own Raxan, then I'd have my Zard stuck, my Radiant Zard stuck in the active for an extra turn. So I went with this. I'm still not 100% sure what was correct. I figure since I'm resetting them to two, this was the right move. And I still have a lot of cards in my deck, so there's a very good chance that I wouldn't hit the Turo or any way to move the Radiant Zard. And we end up taking this game away because they scoop in just one moment. Now here's the list that I was playing. Like I said, the only difference from this and the list that won the regional is minus one Nest Ball and plus another Professor Turo. I like it like this. It's pretty like if your plan if your locals doesn't have a bunch of Snorlax or anything, you really don't need the double Turo. You can even cut the Yells Cheer for another Turo if you want it. I don't know. Those kind of those couple last slots are really personal preference, I think, especially for locals. All right, we see a man or a Mimikyu. In the active, so it could either be Guardi, Espathra, some kind of control stall deck. And we have already started a Pidgeot. I don't know, I guess I wasn't really thinking stall at all. Well, we do have Turo and Team Yells here, so I just throw down the Rotom. I wasn't, I really wasn't thinking stall. For some reason, I was thinking Guardi or Espathra when I saw the Mimikyu. And we'll just Rotom and see. We get. And it's Donphan Mill. I think this is a pretty awful matchup for Charizard. But the other couple games I have were against Iron Hands, which I think is a pretty good matchup for Charizard. And they just go for the yellow turn one Eerie, which in this case, it's kind of fine, I guess. But it could have been a lot worse. The Super Rad's not great, and the top deck of the Arvin kind of saves it. Losing a super out against Stall always sucks. And I added this Charmeleon, the one that does 70 specifically for Mimikyu. Which definitely comes in handy. There's quite a few decks trying to cheese you with Mimikyu. You can add a second one of the other one too and just go Heat Tackle into the 50 Charmeleon attack. And if it's Guardy, they have to put damage on it anyway, so you can double heat tackle it. This deck can usually get through Mimikyu as long as it doesn't have any ways to make its HP huge and also get rid of your Lost Vacuum or something. And here I'm trying to think of what to Star Alchemy for if I want to get my Pidgeot out or if I want to 
get Charizard out and start attacking. And I end up going with Pidgeot, just get double Charmeleon and get my board set up. Make myself Devo proof so that TMD Evolution would never really hurt me. And I'll just pass. I don't know, that might have been like a little too slow, but I really wanted to get Pidgeot out, especially against a mill deck, because I really want to be pulling certain cards out of my deck before they can mill it any further. And they just retreat and start doing their thing. I hit a couple resources, but I don't need much right now. All I really want is my Iono's Super Rod, Boss, and Team Yell's Cheer, and maybe Turo in case they try to stall something in the active. I'll just get the energies on the guys, and just retreat and start attacking. That's all you really can do, just hope to take six prizes before they mill ya. You wanna try to play as few cards as possible and hold on to Iono's till you get low on prizes so you can put more cards back into your deck. And yeah, boss is usually good against these decks. I don't know, you really just want to try to conserve your resources and play as little as possible. And they're getting their setup going. Counter catch my Rotom, which is pretty unfortunate. But I have Pidgeot, as long as they don't mill my Turo. That would really suck. I hit the Prime Catcher, which is very unfortunate. That's another way to switch that we really don't want to lose. And they, they keep putting on pressure like this, which is unfortunate, because I would have loved to grab out Iono or Prime Catcher or something like that out of my deck this turn to hold on to. Or the Lost Vacuum to take the knockout. Now we're really just hoping that they don't mill any of those cards. Kind of unfortunate that this Don Fan deck isn't better. It's pretty cool. It has like a decent Charizard matchup, I think. Especially because your Zard isn't going to be one-shotting the Don Fans with the charm on it. Or Great Tusk. I keep calling it Don Fan. It basically is a Don Fan. Alright, and they counter catch your my Charmeleon now. Quick search, the Lost Vacuum, I don't know, I don't know what I was really thinking this turn. Cause I kind of want like, to definitely take a knockout, I don't know, I got lucked out on that turn, now that I'm watching this back, that whole sequence was just a huge mistake. I don't know what I could have done better, I think I was thinking that I'm just going to Lost Vacuum and settle as that for the prize, because what can I really do at that point? I'm in an awkward spot. They end up promoting the Mimikyu anyway, which is definitely seems like a mistake. I don't know, maybe you promote the Greninja there? I'm not sure. Because Mimikyu is definitely getting knocked out. But like, the Great Tusk or the Greninja, there's a chance that that wouldn't have gotten knocked out. So I don't know about that play. They have their Sados to keep going. Now we're really just, we don't want to see them hit our boss, our Team Yells Cheer, or our Ionos. And they got the cape, and we're out of vacuums. I pretty much thought that I lost this game at, like, at this point, I'm just kind of playing it out to see what happens. It seems kind of over, because I have to two-shot. What I'm hoping is that... You'll see this turn, I use Team Yell's Chair to put two Iono and a boss back in the deck, I believe. Or do I grab the boss? I think I grab the Team Yell's Chair. That'd be really risky if I don't. But it's a debate, I guess. I, eh, it's not much of a debate. I gotta go through this thing at some point anyway. Yeah, the team yells cheer. I gotta just put more cards back in my deck. And I have to Iono next turn. 
and I'm hoping to Iono twice to buy myself as many turns as possible. And as soon as I play this, I'm like, oh, wait, I might just be able to win with Iono, because that is always a win condition to keep in mind with stall or control decks. Well, yeah, stall or control, really. A lot, often control will have a huge hand, so you won't be able to do this. But decks like this, you can check to see if you can Iono and deck them out. But I just Iono so they don't mill me next turn. And I draw Iono and boss. So at this point, I'm kind of like, all right, I should be good to win this game. There's really not much, because I can just reset my deck one more time next turn, and there's nothing that they can stall in the active. And they deck out, they go down to one. They end up going to below six cards combined with their deck in their hand. So we just went on the spot, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we did get lucky that they kind of decked themselves out because with the charms, we're just not able to one-shot them, and they probably would have won if they were able to just put more cards in their deck. But that is the Charizard deck that is just on a tear right now. Charizard's really good. It's the best deck in the format. If you're not going to play it, you should definitely learn how to play against it. And uh, yeah, enjoy.